Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're gonna do a mailbag time. I actually received quite a lot of things. Some things I don't even know who sent me, which is pretty interesting. That's never happened before. So that's that's really cool, I guess. Um, all right, so first of all, let's start with something that's not related. I got this uh, gimbal here, which is really cool for my vlogging videos or my CNC project videos, which I'll be testing out soon. Luckily, this thing does fit a Note 9. Uh, which is something I was afraid of and it fits absolutely perfect, but we'll be checking this out in a later video. Let's put this aside. I'll have it linked down below. I think that one was sent by Banggood, but I'm not sure. The Emacs Buzz. I have no idea who sent this to me. Emacs didn't contact me. Banggood didn't contact me. I just don't know where it came from. I was actually surprised when I received it. And this is not the 4S version. Unfortunately, I have it prepared to go out and go fly, but the weather is just absolute shit lately. So this is the BNF 6S 1700 KV. Now, when I first opened it, I was actually quite surprised. I really like the overall quality, but there was a couple issues with mine here. It's, it's more of a cosmetic issue than anything else. And as you can tell, they give you two props and you kind of just try to read the uh, instruction manual here a little bit. They give you one set of prop for high efficiency. So for a very long flight time, and they give you another prop that's designed for uh, basically freestyle. So they have, I think, six sets of each. So you have, I mean, six pairs, uh, not pairs, six sets. Yeah, six of these and six of these. Now, if we remove this, when you remove yours, remove it actually quite slowly because what happened with mine, if we take a closer look here, oh shit, all right, okay. Uh, these were moved out of place. I had to move them back into place, but you can see the glue that they've put and it's, it just looks really nasty, you know? But it's not a deal breaker, and as you can tell right there also, that is the only issue that I currently see with it. Uh, they do provide you with an extra arm and also some uh, a, a Pagoda 3B uh, antenna here, which is really cool. And it actually does look like it could take a beating. They're using really thick carbon fiber just about everywhere. And uh, we're going to take a closer look at the electronics later on. They are using big FETs, and I do see quite a lot of filtration going on there, so that's really good. I don't know how well it's going to do on a success. And uh, it's going to be pretty interesting to see it out, but I really love the design. Um, that I can tell you, but that's all I can really currently say right now about it until we take it out. Now, from understanding, from seeing people's reviews, I don't think anyone has gotten the 6S version. I'm very happy that I did. Um, the 4S seems to be um, not very efficient and possibly, I don't want to say underpowered, but possibly underpowered due to the thrust weight ratio. Now, SZ speed. I think I got these from SZ speed. And the reason for that is they wanted to raise awareness for something. They are actually a manufacturer. They're the ones that do it for Brother Hobby and some other companies as well. So I think Brother Hobby is not the manufacturer as I understand. And SZ speed actually does the motors for a lot of the companies. Now, if we take a closer look here, they look like really nice motors. Now looking at them says something, but actually using them is a whole nother story here. And uh, they look really nice, so I don't know how much these cost. They're probably very well priced. The design looks pretty good, uh, nothing too fancy. It does have those little gripping things here, uh, which is really good if you're gonna be doing some 3D flying from my understanding um, from uh, some of my subscribers who are telling me that you're gonna need something that has a little more grip on a propeller, especially if you're gonna be doing 3D flying, which I am planning on doing as soon as the freaking weather clears up. I am getting really sick of the weather lately. All right, so let's put these to the side. Hopefully they're gonna be pretty cool. Um, also, I picked up the Mamba 1750 KV motors. Now the Mamba uh, motors that are on the newest uh, diatone, which I'll have linked down below. I forgot the hell it's called. They just have so many names now. Uh, th they performed really well, the high KV version. I love high KV. So I wanted uh, to pick up the 2207 1750 KV. They're really cheap and they're 6S motors. So I really wanna test these guys out on my 6S build very soon to see how well they perform because they could be a really great contender against the Emacs Ecos. And then durability, that will be answered. I don't know if the channel will be able to answer longevity and durability because, you know, I just, I can't keep flying one motor for six months and not fly anything else. Um, it's just, you know, unless I really like the motor, then I could come back and do update videos on. For example, Racer Star 2207 2500 KV. I really love this motor and I've had this motor for maybe six months. Don't take my word for six months, maybe more, maybe less, but uh, for more than three months, that's for sure. And um, I use it actually quite often. It's a basher quad basically and it's still holding up pretty well. Not a lot of bad crashes, but it's still holding up very well as in just normal use without crashes. 
So I also got these here. They're the adapters for the X light. So you it'll, it'll enable you to use the larger, um, what is it called? The, the larger modules here. Uh, we'll check out the pinout here so we can understand the pinout and then we can do other modifications to it. I know this might be useful for some people who don't want to just buy this, but want to know what pin does actually what. And you can kind of get an idea here a little bit. I still actually don't know if it's supposed to go in like this or like this. It doesn't really say anything. It doesn't come with anything. So T-Motor also sent me their new slim ESCs. I think these are F3 ESCs if I remember correctly and I could possibly not remember correctly. But I think they are their F3 ESCs or those slim ones. Um, they are using pretty big FETs if I remember correctly. But we're going to be testing these very soon. Uh, within a couple days the stress testing will come out. I'm just trying to figure out how the hell to do it. Uh, record with what because I also do have you know one of these C cameras but it was the cheapest one. It's okay and it's going to be fine for now. Uh, I'm going to be using this to do the temperature reading. And I'm also thinking incorporating motor stress testing. And what is motor stress testing? Well, this is what I came up with. Now, everyone's testing torque, KV, and all these types of things. However, what I figured out from designing my own ESC, the reason why some people have different, you know, rate, different, you know, torque and different uh, thrust measurements is one thing, obviously, the altitude and the air pressure it has a lot to do with it and the humidity. But a really big factor, like a huge factor, in my opinion, is actually the ESC that is being used. And um, that actually does quite a lot. And I'll get into that in a later video. I've been actually doing a lot of research into ESCs. And I'll be showing you some videos of us testing dead times and stuff. And why most of the ESCs we're using might not be so good, actually. But that's still a theory of mine. That's why I'm not getting too deep into it. So these are the F3, uh, I think they're F3, the F35 amp slim ESCs up to 6S. They look pretty massive. Filtration looks somewhat minimal, uh, but obviously we'll take a look at them once we test them. That's all I can currently say. I also got these. Uh, I actually purchased these. These are the iPika 2 to 5S. They were like seven bucks or seven to 10 bucks. They have really great filtration on board with really nice ceramic capacitors. They are BL Heli 32 ESCs. And um, these are just, th the reason why they're so cheap is because it's an older model. Nobody's really buying it and they have a bunch of stock left over. So that's why they go super cheap and, you know, it doesn't make them a bad ESC or it possibly does. But we're going to test them and it, 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 I think it's going to test pretty well. It's using baby fat, so don't expect 6S out of, out of this ESC. I also got the Acon here. I, I don't know who sent this to me. It doesn't even matter because we're just going to noise test it. Um, so we got the AK3255 Amp 6S ESC. I think Acon is working with Spedex because this looks like a Spedex design, especially the color. Like, I don't know, just I've touched so many ESCs that sometimes just the design says a lot about the product. They're using that modular uh, little design here for the, uh, I think, regulators. Yeah, for the regulators, they're using this little modular design. And everything is going to be up top here. I don't know if I'll remove the heatsink, but uh, we'll see how well this actually does very soon. Also, something possibly off topic for most people, depending on who's watching my channel. Uh, Taro decided to send me their other version of the gimbal. The one that I've used, if you missed my channel, there's one that I've used on my Zod Dart XL, which was really cool. And they sent me the other one for the GoPro. However, there's something that is pretty trippy. You see this little case? This doesn't actually come with it. You have to install it. I don't even remember how I installed it right here. So when I received it and I didn't see this part, I was like, what the hell? Is it missing something? I just started worrying and then I was looking online like, how the hell are these people, you know, like, how are they mounting it? It just doesn't make any sense. And then basically you get a screw right here that you remove and then you, this is, this is the thing that comes with your GoPro. So if you don't have this, then you're not gonna be able to do this. But what's really cool about this and also a downside to this, uh, I think we'll be able to fit a run cam. Now you're like, why the hell would you want to fit the run cam 3S? Well, because the new GoPro Session 5s don't have analog video output. So you'll be basically using this blind unless you want to keep it in one position. But if you also want to keep it in one position, there's other, other options there that I've also received. And we're going to take a look at in a later video that I have them on my RC cards. It's actually really fun to, fly, to, to, to drive with these on RC cards. You get really nice footage. So, but also another thing you, why you might want to get this also is it's lighter um, and it takes battery voltage. So you, you don't have the weight of the battery, the metal casing. However, I don't know, I don't think this is as waterproof as the other one. And the other one I'm talking about, I'll put a little gimbal section below and then under you can see all the gimbals I'm talking about basically and you, you'll figure it out. 
Um, it does come with everything you need, just like the other one. It's just the mounting solution is different here and possibly the balancing in the software. So yeah, this is gonna be pretty cool. I haven't tested it just yet, but I've tested the other one. The other one performs really great. If this one performs as great as that one, then it's a really viable choice. But again, you won't be able to have video output, analog video output, if you are doing something that's uh, cinematic sensitive, if you might say, maybe that's a word here. Um, also, a couple things if you guys are interested in, um, would you guys be interested and showing you little tutorials on the FR Sky and Lewis scripts because I got a really nice Lewis script for the airplanes. It's called, I think it's called the iNav Flight Lewis script or something like that. It's really cool, actually. Let's actually see. Let's take a look at it. Um, you know, even though the Horus is super huge and just um, very bulky, to be honest, it just feels really nice in the hand. Like. You know, even though I can't reach sometimes all the way in there, but just, oh my goodness. This is not the S version. For some reason, I don't like the other gimbals. I like these more. I don't know why. I just really love that ratcheting. I can't, you know, I can't use any uh, other transmitter that doesn't have this little feeling, you know, this ratcheting through the steps. It just gives you, it just feels like it gives you much more precision because you know how much you've, you've moved it. It's, it's just really nice. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's see how we can access this because I completely forgot. There we go. Look at that. That is super sexy. Do you see that? So we, here we get telemetry, altitude, distance, and then the GPS, and then we have our, you know, just everything. This is so pretty. This is just so cool. And I think we, this is the home arrow possibly, but I haven't really played with it just yet. I've just installed it and got it to work. And um, it's just really awesome. You can actually modify this to as you please. You could also run this on the QX7 and the X Lite, I believe. But um, it just doesn't do it justice as on one of these. And also, I think the new jumpers as well. Uh, those are really cool over there. So yeah, this is just really awesome. I mean, this just brings back life to this. I'm, st I'm, st I'm still using it, but I mean, it just makes it a little bit better. However, some of the things on this one I could have probably did a little bit different. For example, you see the handles are getting really disgustingly dirty. But that's, I mean, that's, that's fine. Um, because, you know, when you set it on the ground to do something, you know, it just gets dirty. Also, your hands, if you're touching a lot of carbon fiber or you just had to dig through some shit to get your quad out of it. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, I would have chose a different color. And also something I really don't like is that the switches are usually, they get loose. Um, but that could be due to like any other thing. And the way that it charges is kind of stupid, but. So also talking about portable gimbals, this one right here. This one I have used the living crap out of, crashed it, banged it up. You can see that everywhere. I put it on my RC cars and this thing is just insane. So if you ever really thought about getting one of these, I'll have a link down below. You should definitely get one because I am enjoying the living crap out of it. I actually thought I broke it a couple times. I got into some pretty massive crashes, like super fast with my RC cars where they just rolled for infinite amount of times. And this was just on top uh, with just held with a screw here. So it's a, it's a really nice, um, it's a really nice gimbal, I can tell you that right now. But unfortunately, what you can't do with this is control it via your remote, but you can't control it via your phone, and it has a lot of different speeds and options, which we'll take a closer look at in another day. Unfortunately, the video didn't come out because I lost the goddamn footage, but yeah, that the shit like that happens sometimes. So I'm planning on taking this out once the weather gets clear again, and it is pretty water resistant, not waterproof. I mean, that's what they're stating. I didn't really use it in the rain. Um, but I will after I release maybe the first official review. These stuff are really cool to play with because you could also modify them and make them do other things that they weren't supposed to do. Oh yeah, and also a super awesome little thing that just arrived. Ta-da! This is the new, this is not new actually, but this is new for me. Uh, this is the cheapest model of the RC Benchmark motor thrust thrust stand thingy. This is what Engineer X uses. Now I already had the bigger one, the really expensive one. That's the one I I've modified to run my ESC testing on, the noise testing on. However, this one is going to be slightly possibly modified. Uh, I will just keep it as is to run uh, motor testing, stress testing. Okay, I'm not gonna do, I don't know if I'll do thrust testing, but I will, I'm sure that I will do thrust testing for tiny motors, but large motors, I'm just not gonna do that. There's a lot of other people that do it. And plus my current elevation altitude just gets me some weird results that I just can't even compare to anybody. So I just don't even bother anymore. So yeah, this is gonna be modified to run micro motors and it's also possibly gonna be modified in a way to keep it safe so I don't burn it while I'm doing the stress testing. Now the stress testing is gonna be pretty simple. This is what I'm planning and I want your feedback on this. 
So I'm gonna have a ESC, obviously, possibly like over here or somewhere. And I'm gonna have my Seek thermal imaging thingy recording so we can actually record the temperature. So it'll be taking the highest temperature of this whole area. So we can, you know, because it's, it's gonna be very difficult for me to move while this is running. And while we're doing that, hopefully the motor doesn't get hotter than the ESC though. I never really thought about that, but we'll get into that later. Uh, then we're gonna just keep running it until the ship burns. I mean, the ESC burns. And then uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll get two of them, two of each, burn them and um, see how well they perform or how long they last. I know it's not really a, a good test, but this can give you a really great idea of how well an ESC could possibly last from heat or how well it can dissipate heat and how much current can go through it. So I think it'll give us a really nice reference. And you know, it's gonna be really great also because nobody's doing this and we can see where most of the ESCs fail. And maybe some of them we can revive back, you know? We can see, oh, the FET driver broke here. And we'd also see if like the microcontroller unit burnt the pin or something. So I think it'll be a really interesting test. Now, motor stress testing, you might say, how the hell would you do that? Well, again, just full throttle until it burns. Now, what will that give you? The only thing that'll actually answer for us is how well the coating on the winding is. If some motors, these are just theoretical numbers again, because some people just take my theor theoretical numbers into real numbers, uh, but the theoretical number. So let's just say this motor burnt at uh, 50 degrees Celsius. Okay, for example, that's it, it burned. And then this motor burns at 70 degrees Celsius. And then, you know, this way you'll know that you have a better chance of the motor not burning due to heat because it could withstand a lot more heat. Because how does a motor burn? When the windings get so hot that the coating goes off and then they just short circuit and that's how you burn a motor. So, I mean, it just makes sense to test that. Durability, that's not gonna test durability, but it'll test the stress testing and how much heat they can, uh, one thing, dissipate and also handle, which means, which can get us a really nice representation is if, if we can, uh, if, the, if the motor is good or not. And also there's another thing that we can also possibly test, which is stall the motor, which is just hold the motor and just keep it on. See what burns first, the ESC. I have no idea how to test that part of it just yet, but it'll need a lot of burning things enable me to figure out how to do another nice test, you know? Uh, for motor stall, you know, like when you crash and when you're, or when you're going through full throttle and your motor stops all of a sudden. These types of things I really want to see uh, because also the ESC might burn. But we'll just start with something simple, which is stress testing. Just run it on 100% throttle. I'm going to need a motor that's not going to burn on 100% throttle for a while so we can burn the ESC. And then I'll need uh, motors with an ESC that <laughs> won't burn um, and just do that. But I think I'll probably do a homemade ESC that I'm pretty sure won't burn with like six ounce of copper. I mean, the most expensive ESC out there just uses two ounce of copper, but I think I could make one with six ounce of copper and just have it nice and ventilated and probably even water cooling on it. It'll be pretty sick. It'll just be for testing motors basically. But th those additions will come at a later date. Right now, I'll just start with what I have. And uh, hopefully you guys could support the channel and enable me to do these things a lot faster and uh, just be a little bit more creative and just uh, not have to worry about how to feed my family basically because I do do this full time. And um, yeah, that's it guys. So I'll have a link to everything down below. Huge shout out to RC Benchmark. Uh, they will also be sponsoring this channel with a the Otis Tracker. It's like an indoor tracking system for drones which is gonna be really cool because I'm gonna have a lot of content coming on that later on, especially with AI and all these types of things. So we're gonna see some pretty interesting stuff as well. And also DF Robot contacted me. They wanna send me a Latte Panda, which is basically like a Windows PC Raspberry Pi, but I'm not gonna put Windows, I'm gonna put Linux, and then we're gonna do some crazy cool AI projects with it. That's where this, aim, this channel is going towards. I'll still do my reviews, uh, but I really wanna uh, just give more knowledge or more information and actually really test stuff that's not really found anywhere and just, you know, just mess around and see what we find. And also your input is huge on the channel. So if you have any ideas, I would love to test them out. Just let me know down in the comment section and let me know what you guys think of everything. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out guys.